If you want to build your own roll cage, there are special tools involved you're probably going to have to buy. It's no secret that building your first cage may well cost more than paying someone else to do it. And in fact, they may do a better job. But you can't put a price on the satisfaction of doing the job yourself, right? With the tools bought and the skills learnt, over the years, these tools should be able to pay for themselves tenfold. There's an age-old saying, buy cheap, buy twice. But this isn't always the case. Let me run you through the tools you're going to need, how much they cost, and I'll tell you the mistakes that I made along the way, so that hopefully, you don't make them too. Taking up room in the corner of my garage is this massive bender. This is a tube bender, not to be confused with a pipe bender. If you don't know the difference, there will be a link at the end of this video for where I try to explain. This is a JD Squared Model 3. It's American made, incredibly well engineered and built piece of kit. There are cheaper tube benders on the market, most of which are direct copies of this one. Bending tube without deforming it is very difficult. The whole purpose of building a cage is to make your car safer, right? You aren't just doing it for looks, I'm sure. Tube is expensive, so it's not something you want to be wasting. This exact model of bender is used by professionals all around the world. Optional attachments can be added to make it hydraulic or air over hydraulic powered, so you don't have to struggle and do it by hand. A tube bender is a hefty investment and I'd personally advise purchasing the best that you can. Not only for a better result, but so you know you'll be able to buy spare parts for it in 20 years time. The tube bender itself will cost you around £360, and then you're going to need a die. You'll need one for every size tubing that you will be bending. A die for the most common size tubing, inch and 5 8 or inch and 3 quarter, will cost you around £370. You'd also need a stand to bolt it to the floor, this will cost around £50. Read the rule book. I can't stress this enough. If you're building a roll cage for a racing series, be it drag racing, time attack, or hill climbing, there'll be a set of rules that you'll need to follow. If you don't understand them, or are still unsure, just ask. Despite me reading the rules, the first time I built a cage, I didn't understand them properly, as I can't read and my first roll cage I built was built in a wrong thickness walled tubing. An expensive mistake that could have easily been avoided. There are plenty of people out there who know and will help. Depending on the materials you're using and the rule book you're following, some materials will need to be TIG welded and some you can MIG weld. MIG welding is generally cheaper, quicker and arguably easier to pick up as a beginner. There are lots of cheap welders around. I strongly suggest avoiding the cheapest of the cheap, but I don't feel that you need to spend an awful lot of money. Especially as a beginner, the difference between a 300 or a 5,000 pound meg when welding roll cage tube will be indistinguishable. I have owned the GYS 142 Smart Meg for several years now, and I couldn't recommend it enough. It welds fantastically and is very affordable. They can be picked up new for around 360 pounds. You'll also need shielding gas, Expect to pay around £60 for the gas and around an £80 refundable deposit for the bottle. If the rules require TIG welding, this can be a little more expensive. The market is flooded with rebranded Chinese made machines. These machines weld fantastically, but I strongly suggest that you look around for a company who has a recommended customer service. To weld steel, you only need a DC welder. However, it's a solid investment to purchase an AC-DC welder, which will also be able to weld aluminium. It will pay for itself at a later date, I'm sure. The first TIG welder was this Stahlwerk. Stahlwerk? Stahlwerk. A fantastic machine that was only around 700 pounds at the time. They offer seven years warranty, which is great, but when mine broke, it had to be posted to Germany for them to assess or repair it. I will get around to fixing it one day, but upon its death, I used it as an excuse to upgrade. This is an RTEC 170 amp AC-DC TIG. 
They're a British company with incredibly renowned customer service. Although this is a little more expensive at £1,070, it has more features and I can honestly say it welds a lot nicer than my old machine. I ordered this at around 2pm one afternoon and it was delivered to me the next day. I believe if you ever get an issue with these, they will send a courier to collect it, which is very reassuring. This is a tube notcher. When two tubes intersect, in order to have a tight fit up, the end of the tube needs to be cut to fit against the other tube. Although this process can be done by hand, it is far faster and easier, generally, to use a tube notcher. This is the cheapest you can get at around £60. Although it does the job, sometimes it really isn't very accurate. It cuts off centre, it has so much play in the shaft, it constantly destroys hole saws. I would strongly suggest spending a little bit more money and getting something a little better than this, or even just learning to do it by hand using a chop saw. To use your tube notcher, or to drill holes in your tubing, you're going to need a decent drill. Don't buy a cheap one. Cheap drills come with brushed motors, which have a tendency to burn out when they get stuck or have to work hard. I burnt through four drills before I finally bought a brushless drill. This model with batteries costs around £200, and I highly recommend spending the most that you can afford. Another tool not to cheap out on is a grinder. Me, being a cheapskate, bought three grinders at around £20 each, which all broke within a week. A good quality grinder doesn't have to cost much. This was around £70 and it is fantastic. You'll be using this a lot to cut tube and to clean up the edges before welding. Although cordless grinders are convenient, they cost more and the extra hassle of having to charge batteries is annoying to me. The cord may be a little bit more inconvenient at times, but you know it always has full power, isn't about to run out, and they cost a fraction of the price of a cordless one. A cheap angle gauge can be picked up for under £10, however, I highly recommend not using one like this. Although they are consistent and they work, at a glance it's very difficult to read the measurement accurately to a single degree. A digital gauge like this can be picked up for around £50 and they're far easier to use. They can be zeroed out to account for your wobbly floor and will make your life a lot easier and the whole process faster. Hopefully if you're looking to make your own roll cage, you've learnt something here today and know which cheap tools to avoid. Or maybe you're just being nosy and want to know what things cost. Nobody here is judging you. Although the initial outlay for these tools can be expensive, it should last you a long time, and there's nothing better than when somebody asks you, who built your roll cage? You can turn around and say, yeah, I built that. Well, unless you built it out of the wrong material and you're not allowed to race, well, that's not such a good feeling. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, as I'm always trying to release more content all the time, as I clearly have nothing better to do. Thank you.